Howdy, it's Tubal Kane again, and I'm standing before my Logan Powermatic Monkey Ward's 10-inch uh, lathe. And the project in this video, or this series of videos, will to be making new dials, crossfeed dials, for this Logan lathe. And let me explain to you why I want to make new dials. The diameter of the dials on this Logan lathe are about 1.225 inches on the crossfeed dial and it's even smaller here on the compound dial of uh, 950 thousandths. Now the problem with that is that it, uh, the smaller the diameter the closer together are the graduations and the harder they are to read. Also these old dials are just made of carbon steel and although I've polished them and they're clean, they still are relatively hard to read, especially by a 70-year-old man. Now when I make uh, new dials, I'm going to make them out of aluminum, and you can see how much larger the dials are. It's about one and three-quarter inch diameter, and that, that moves the uh, graduations farther apart and makes them easier to read. So this is what I'm going to make. Now let's take a look at some of the other lathes and see how the dials are made on them. And I'm not going to talk at all in this video about uh, radius reading dials and uh, uh, diameter reading dials, but I'm just going to reproduce the dials uh, with uh, the graduations that you see here. And the uh, impetus of this will be to show you how to scribe those graduations accurately uh, by indexing them on the lathe, not the milling machine. Now I'm at the 12 inch closing lathe and you can see how much larger the dials are and they're satin chrome steel and much easier to read. And I do very much like the dials and I do like using this lathe. Real easy to see at a glance. Now some of this uh, is a moot point because uh, a lot of you have digital readouts on your lathes now and then the dials really don't matter anymore. This is my 12 inch Craftsman Atlas lathe and it was made in the 70's and the dials on it are relatively large about an inch and a half. Fairly easy to read other than that they are not satin chrome but if you have an older Atlas lathe the diameter of the dials will be much smaller and are harder to read depending on your age. This may aggravate some of you and some of you may have never thought about it. Now I'm at my Hardinge lathe and uh, this is a newer lathe. Well it's probably 30 years old but Hardinge for years has been making their dials like this out of uh, some kind of white plastic but very well made because there's nothing on a hard end lathe that is cheap or, or chintzy looking just a very high quality but look at how easy these are uh, to read uh, these graduations you know with uh, black graduations and numbers on a white dial just it's, it's a pleasure to use this lathe also note that the diameter of the dial is so large that it moves the uh, uh, the graduations apart so they're easy to read. Now, now let's go out in the other shop and take a look at uh, several other lathes out there. I'm out in the other shop and this is my Logan 820 lathe that I recently acquired. It's a 10 inch lathe and uh, look at how the dials are made on uh, this particular machine. Both of these dials are the same diameter and uh, difficult to read and I will replace these too because I'm going to make several sets of these new dials. But uh, one thing that I noticed here on the Logan lathes and other lathes may be similar and I used to curse these lathes because they didn't use a knurled thumb screw here to reset the collar. But uh, only after doing this video did I realize why because as you uh, move the cross slide back at some point those knurled nuts would strike the back of the uh, cross slide here. I meant cross slide not uh, compound. Also uh, in designing this or coming up with an alternate way I realized if the diameter of the dials is too large it will also strike the cross slide as it backs up. 
So that has to be a consideration and there will in fact be a little bit less travel coming this way on the Logan lathe after I install the new dials but I don't see that as being a, a big uh, problem so I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. But I'm going to save the old dials. I don't throw anything like that away. This is the old beat up Monkey Ward's uh, 10 inch Logan lathe and it's built a little different than the one in the basement even though they are the same lathe but a slightly different vintage no doubt but the dials here are even smaller than the one in my other shop furthermore they're a bit tarnished because I never had to clean them up so you can imagine how hard it is to read these also note here that this is constructed different than the one in the basement and it's very easy to disassemble the whole thing here if you want to take this out and replace it. Now I'm not going to replace this part, I'm only going to modify it and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a little while. But uh, in order to take this off, all one has to do is put an adjustable wrench on here after the hand wheel and the nut and keyway and all of that is removed. Uh, a wrench here will allow you to remove that whole piece and then have access uh, to the screw if you would want to. The dial up here on the compound is similarly very small, less than an inch diameter. You can see how hard that is to read and there's quite a bit of rust on this one as well. So that's what I want to remedy. On, uh, and this uh, entire video or series of videos will be aimed at the uh, Logan lathe not the Atlas or the uh, South Bend, and those may be touched upon in another uh, video, but not in this one. Now I'm standing next to the South Bend 10-inch uh, Heavy, also one of my favorite lathes. And notice, uh, this machine was probably made in the uh, late 50s or 60s, I'm not really sure, probably the 50s. But it uses the larger dials and at some point uh, South Bend made retro kits too where you could you could buy new dials and install them uh, to get around this problem note that uh, this is also assembled with a hex here so you can take this apart but uh, looking at the compound dial here you see that they are smaller diameter than the cross slide but uh, to be even more uh, illustrative here of what I'm doing look at this old compound here from a 9 inch South Bend that I've had around. This is just a scrap one but I keep it just to show. But look at the diameter of this collar here compared to this collar. And you tell me which is easier to read. Now in later South Bend lathes they also had satin chrome which made them easier to, to read. These I have cleaned up but they were a little more tarnished and rusty when I got them. Notice here the distance between each graduation as opposed to the distance between each graduation here and that's what makes it easy or difficult to read. Now that's enough uh, comparison between all the different brands of lathes and vintages that I have here. Back into the basement to show how this uh, new collar will be manufactured. To try to make the point even clearer, comparing this uh, very small dial here, which is less than an inch in diameter on the compound, with the new one and three quarter inch diameter dials that I'm making, using uh, the formula Pi D on the small dials, which is uh, 0.950 diameter, that puts the graduations uh, 29 thousandths of an inch apart, so they're really crowded. Where the larger dial now at 1.750 diameter has graduations that are 54 thousandths apart, which is almost a sixteenth of an inch. And this is closer to a thirty-second of an inch. So it almost doubles the, the distance between the graduations, and it really helps these old eyes who are looking through cataracts uh, read uh, the dials better and hopefully work more accurately. And that uh, math here was uh, simply 
pi d which gives the circumference and divide it by 100 which is 100 graduations and that's that's how I arrived at at these numbers. Eighth grade math. Before I start machining the new dial uh, take a look at the way this uh, Logan is constructed again. Notice that uh, the knurled thumb screw here is going to interfere with the cross slide and that's the same problem I'm going to have as I put a larger collar on here and that will reduce the amount of travel but I do not think that will in any way really affect the uh, performance of this machine at least on, on what I do but let's take a look at first uh, at how this is constructed to start with I've already loosened the nut here and allows me to pull off the hand wheel and then there's a little uh, key here and another nut and then this dial will come right off. So I'm going to do that off camera because this is a little bit hard to get off because the thread is buggered up a little bit. And uh, that's because at some point in time a hammer and chisel mechanic had at it. You see now the collar will come right off the dial. That's all there is to it. Now, you may or may not want to take this off. I don't really need it off. I just want to show you how this is made and give you an alternative way of doing this job. But now, whatever you do, do not just put uh, uh, pliers on there to get this off because it will be tight. Now, on that other machine, I, uh, if you recall, there was a hex on it, which is much uh, friendlier uh, when you disassemble it. But in order to loosen this up to start with, and look at all the marks on there. I took a, a bushing that I had, which, which was the right ID, and drilled an eighth inch hole in there. And uh, in other words, I made a bit of a spanner. And this pin will go into the hole. That's just a blind hole there. It's not threaded. Then you can put your vice grip on here. And it'll loosen up quite readily. Now the reason I'm taking this off is to show you that you in fact can make an entirely new piece if you want that would be the larger diameter but it's a complicated piece to make because there's a thread on there and several different diameters and inside there's an oil light bushing goes from one end to the other so I have no intention of uh, remaking that but I think on the south bend if you buy the uh, retro kit that they included uh, that piece which would be built similarly even though it's another manufacturer but when that tightens it up uh, or tightens up the the zero mark there should come to the top but the way I'm going to do that and there's two alternatives for that I've already made one collar here this is aluminum and notice that I've got the uh, witness mark on there and a set screw on the bottom it's an 832 and that can be simply put on here like that tightened down and that can be uh, as far as you go on that but I prefer this next method and, and that's simple enough to make whoops and down it goes I hope it didn't go into the sump pump pit there but I like this uh, method a little bit better and the uh, thickness of it this way is the exact thickness of this piece here so that can be put in place and it has a set screw on the bottom too like that with the witness mark toward the top and then uh, tighten the set screw on the bottom and the entire thing reassembled like this Now I'm going to have to tap that on just a little bit and I'm going to reassemble it with the hand wheel and show you what we got here. I have made the final installation here. Now make sure you do not over tighten the nut that's right at the tip of the pencil point here because that will uh, uh, restrict you. But you know on this inner collar here there's a step. Now maybe you can see why I made that step on there because it must clear the uh, cross slide as you back it out. And at this point now 
we're at the end of our travel so I have reduced the travel oh I didn't measure it I suspect about a half inch but take a look now at the difference between the old dial and the new dial and you can choose to use a uh, knurled knob here if you make one and I show you how in one of the other videos you have to look it up be sure and use a little brass uh, pin so that the set screw itself does not come down and damage the thread or the keyway you, know, you need to have, have a piece of brass under there whatever length is desirable probably eighth inch diameter brass or a little bit under but that's how that dial looks much easier to read than the old one And notice here, again, that uh, this aluminum here is slightly lower than uh, this surface right here. Okay, now that that's done, I'm going to step over to the closing lathe and uh, show you how I made these parts. And then I'll make the graduations on uh, this Logan lathe. So, come with me to the other machine. I'm going to rough out the dial first on the closing lathe and uh, this is about one and three quarters diameter and the piece I'm starting with here for some reason is a little bit larger and it really doesn't matter at all as long as this matches with uh, the other piece they need to be the same diameter and it's an overall thickness here of a, about 5 eighths of an inch, 3 eighths hole, and approximately a half inch uh, right here in thickness. And I'm going to start by facing this off. I've already center drilled and this is the 23 64ths drill bit and I'm going in three quarters of an inch I sure do like this Alibrex 